and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith, and today we're going to be making something a little different, a little something for ourselves or a gift for a friend because Christmas is coming. And who doesn't love a cute little apron? Um, it is very vintage inspired. It flares out like a, a circle skirt, so you'll kind of be learning how to make a circle skirt or like half of it. <laughs> so anyway, it has two layers, and this one actually has pull on, on the underside of all of the layers, even the top. Um, pull is a waterproof fabric that I use a lot for um, baby things, but stuff that you don't want water to come through and get on. Um, so if, if you're washing dishes and you're worried about getting soaked, using pull underneath of this apron, you'll stay nice and dry. Um, so we're going to get our fabric, pick something super cute, and let's get started. So what you're going to need are two pieces for the bottom half of your little apron. Um, one of them is going to be 27 by 18, and the other one is 21 by 41. Now these measurements can change. I'm a little larger, so I would want it a little bit wider, but it's up to you. Today, these are the measurements that we're going to be sticking with just to keep the math easy. So what I'm going to do now... And if you want, this is an alternative, if you want to do this. Um, I had a customer ask me about waterproofing her apron because she's always soaked when she washes dishes. Um, I went and got some pull. If you've watched any of my other videos, I use pull a lot uh, with cloth diaper items and reusable items and stuff like that. Um, pull is spelled P-U-L. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, you can get it online. What I'm going to be doing is lining it with the pull so that if she's washing dishes, and she gets wet, it won't, it won't matter because the pool acts as a water barrier and will keep her nice and dry. So put that over there. Grab your 27 by 18 inch piece and you're going to fold it in half. Now to find your little circumference, and I'm going to bring the camera over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, but we're going to fold it in half and I'm going to have the folded part towards me so that I can do the little uh, radius thing. So let me grab the camera. All right, so you're going to need a four inch radius. And what you do is you just put it on the mark and mark four inches. Or if you have a small plate or something that you can put it at the four inch mark, that'll help you get the roundabout part. So um, I actually adjusted this on mine. I made this part longer and then I took it to about here. That way it was a little bit wider. Um, it just depends on you. I would make a mock-up first, see if this one actually fits you or not, and then kind of go from there. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to mark 9 inches from this, from our first radius. We're going to mark 9 inches. So you're just going to go around marking 9 inches all the way around. If you had made it a little wider this way, you could make it a little longer, but it's a cute little apron, so you want it kind of dainty. Okay. Almost there. And then once you do all of your marks, you can connect them so that you can cut it out. And I know it's kind of hard to see on camera because it's it's a darker fabric. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to grab our scissors and we're going to cut all of this out. And that's our first layer. Okay, so I know it's hard to see, but I laid the first one that we cut down on top of the second one that we're going to be using. And what, why I did that is I'm going to go ahead and get this 4-inch radius without having to mark it and all of that because they're going to be the exact same. And it would help to get both layers of fabric. So I've got the smaller piece right on top of the next piece that we're going to be working with. And the next measurement that we've got is going to be seven, and we're going to do seven all the way around. So 
so just take your tape measure. You can you can kind of connect them while you're doing it. That way you don't have to come back and do it. Just keep swinging, swinging, swinging. We want to swing, we want to swing, we want to swing. Okay. Now that you've got that done, just checking on my viewfinder to make sure we're straight. Now you're going to cut that out and then you'll have both layers. The next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the pull and I'm gonna use these two as my template so I don't have to do all of this with a pull and I'll show you in just a minute what I mean. But it'll make it a lot easier. Where did my lines go? All right, there we go. Need to get my glasses on, this is ridiculous. All right, so you've got your two pieces. Let's grab the pull. We're going to grab our pool, and pool has two sides. One of those sides is really shiny and smooth, and the other side feels more like fabric. We're going to do it with the fabric side up, and then just grab our very top piece of our apron and lay it down right sides together. Nice and flat. Grab your pattern weights and then just cut all the way around. Now, with pull, you can't use regular pins. You're going to have to use something like Wonder Clips to hold everything together. And what I'm going to do is just clip this top part because I'm going to be putting, I'm thinking about putting a ruffle in between here, but I just want to hold these pieces together like that. Now let's grab the larger piece and get that cut. So after you get all of that cut out, the next thing you're going to do is cut some six and a half inch strips. Now I've cut three strips out of the fabric that I had and I'm going to sew those together on the short side so that I can make a really long uh, ruffle for the bottom of the skirt and then if I decide that it looks really nice I might do it for the top too. I just haven't made up my mind yet. So we're going to connect these by sewing them. Oh and change my thing to straight stitch. All right, now we're gonna take them to the ironing board and we're gonna iron these seams open and then we're gonna iron them lengthwise so that they're in half. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is kind of press my seams towards the right and I'll do that with both of them. But I'm going to start at the very beginning and I'm going to put the edges together and it's a six and a half inch strip so it's going to give you some really big ruffles which is kind of what I was going for and look really um, I don't know, country-ish. Hopefully I thought the plaid with the chicken kind of made it look a little cute. We'll see when I get it done. Huh? <laughs> Hopefully it'll look cute. Hopefully she'll like it. Um, I'm making this for my aunt, um, for her daughter-in-law. Uh, they let us stay with them one time when there was a bad hurricane coming our way. So that was really nice of them. So I love being able to make a little something for her. She has a ton of chickens, a ton of chickens and animals. 
her house. So jelly. One of these days I want some chickens because they're just so cute. And eggs. Eggs would be good. Especially with all the kids I have. Now that it's all ironed, we're going to take a really interesting tool to make our ruffles. So I said we were using a really interesting tool today. <laughs> There's a lady called Bella May Designs on YouTube, and she teaches you a method of making your little ruffles with a fork. So I figured I would try it out today, see what happens, see how it turns out, and we'll kind of go from there. So I wouldn't think that it would be. Okay. Okay, come on. So go to the middle of the pleat. This is how we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go to the middle of my pleat and then put my fabric through my fork and then turn it and get it as close to the next pleat as I can. Go to the middle of the pleat. Hopefully that you can't hear that lawnmower going. <laughs> oh my goodness. Trying to film is difficult some days. Now she did this, she was just a whipping through it. And since I have never done this before, this is just going to be one of those trial and error things that we're gonna do. I like that they're gonna make my pleats a lot more uniform, though I'm gonna to have to straighten it up a lot because I don't know what I'm doing just yet. So, go to the middle of your pleat, take your fork, turn it around, and I'm probably doing this backwards because I'm left-handed. That's how left-handed brains work. I had to turn my fabric this way. It would probably be a whole lot easier to do it the other way if you're not left-handed. Let's try it this way and see if that doesn't lay flatter. Yes. All right, let's do that. It's going to be figuring it out. If you want to go on Bella May Designs um, YouTube. So I did a couple test runs. And this is how we're going to do this thing. Back like that. Go to the middle of your pleat. Nope. I haven't done this before, so hang, bear with me. And do it just like that. Oh, those are beautiful pleats. Nice and uniform, and they'll all be the same size. And since I've got about a million of these to do, I am probably going to fast forward you guys through the rest. But aren't they beautiful? Nice and just awesome. And if you can remember how to turn the fork, it'll really help. Go check out Bella May Designs. And she's got a video. She knows what she's doing. I don't make ruffles. I just don't. Ruffles are just like not even bro. They are like serious business. That's why I don't make ruffles. Okay. All right, so I've laid out the um, larger piece of the apron. And what I'm going to do is move this out of my way. 
and then we're going to take all those beautiful pleats that we just made and with the pleated side towards the inside we're going to lay this flat and then put our apron top over top of it and then you're just going to clip all the way around making sure that everything meets up um, what we're going to do is we're going to sew around the bottom end. We do not sew around the top or the middle or any of that. You're just going to be doing this little bob bottom edge here. And you're going to have to turn it inside out because it just wants to go every direction but the right direction. And that's all right. Um, I did have to end up cutting two more strips. So it was five strips total. For this, um, I think it's going to be just a little over four, but I went ahead and just did a whole nother strip so that I didn't have to keep stopping and, and re-pleating and, and doing all of that. So you'll just turn it. My ruffles are everywhere. So follow around your pull. Lay down your ruffles. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew around this edge and then I'm going to turn everything inside out. Okay, see it didn't quite take all five. So just a little over four. I don't even want to look for that pleat because that's just going to be, or that seam to tell you how much further. Um, I normally don't do a lot of math. I just go ahead, <laughs> I just go ahead and pleat a bunch of stuff and hope that we even out. All right, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and just go ahead and sew around the bottom edge. Okay, so I've turned everything out, inside out, so that was our seams. Now I've turned it inside out. Now, now I'm just going to top stitch all the way around. Make sure that your uh, lining fabric, that pull, is going to be out of your way. And I may have to go ahead and put this ruffle on the other, uh, the other skirt because it's adorable. So I did decide to go ahead and make the ruffles for the top. I think it's adorable, so that's what we're going to do. So just like you did with the bottom one, we're going to take some clips and we're going to go all the way around the bottom. Sew all the way around the bottom and then turn it inside out. Now just top stitch, just like you did before. So I just wanted to take a second to show you guys the top stitching and why we're doing it. It's to keep this fabric, when you sew, you need to make sure this is out of your way and this is out of your way. And when you top stitch, it just makes it lay nice and flat instead of having like a bulge here because of this it's just all going to lay nice and flat so that's why i do a top stitch all right so i have got the front piece the chest piece that we're going to be doing um and i've also got a layer pull because it's going to be our lining piece now what i'm going to do is i have put the shiny side up because our skirts have the fabric side down. So let me grab that. It's got the uh, fabric side down. So we're going to need to have 
Yes. <laughs> I have to think about it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chickens with the fabric side facing it so that when we sew it and we turn it inside out, the rough piece will be on the outside, if that makes any sense. Now what I'm going to do, um, by the way, the measurements are 15 by 13. So it's going to be 13 high. So if you've got a print, you need to make sure that it's 13 high by 15. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half very carefully because pull likes to move and it's a booger. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little um, curve around here, a very slight one. It's going to have like a heart looking effect to it. And so I'm just going to have a little curve here, a little curve on the edge, and then um, in a little bit. Let me back you up. And then in just slightly, just a little bit on the bottom. Let me grab my scissors. And I would suggest starting out with a little bit, because a little goes a long way. And I probably should put some weights there so it's not moving around. Start cutting just a little bit. That needs to be a little rounder. And then open it up and see if you like what it, you've done. And then if you don't like it or if you want to take more off, you can. So I'm just going to open this up. Alright, so I need a little more definition right here. And then I think I've got it because that's about how I wanted the bottom. So I'm going to flip it back over. I just didn't want that like dark like heart shape. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a two inch strip by, let's see, I should have measured this, 29 inches. And we're going to sew down one side and then the other. And then you're going to turn it inside out. And then we're going to, on the inside, we're going to put our straps down in between the fabrics and then sew around the heart and all that. So what I did was I took your top fabric that you're going to use and then I put clips on there to hold the um, strap in place, the neck strap in place, and then I put the lining material on the back of that. And then I put the clips on there so that I can kind of tell if the straps are going to fit. They're going to be too big, too small, um, that kind of thing. And then that way you can put it around your neck and you can kind of see, okay, well where is it landing? Is it too long? Is it too short? Um, because everybody's different. So everybody's different with their measurements. So I think what I'm going to do, 29 inches is going to be too long. I think I'm going to do 27, and I think that'll be right where I, right where I want it. Um, so you, before you go sewing all of these together, try and do that. Clip it together. Um, remember, don't use pins because pull, it just defeats the whole purpose. You put holes in it and water can get through. Um, so just clip your little straps there and see if that's where, the, where you want them. And then if they're not, you can adjust them now. Whereas if you go ahead and sew them, you're going to have to take all those stitches out, which is annoying. Okay, so I went back to the skirt, um, the rounded part. And what I like to do is put the, the small one on top of the bigger one, as you can see. And then I'm going to do kind of like a stay stitch or just, I'm going to sew them together so that when I'm trying to put the belt on, they don't move all over the place. Okay, now that I've got both skirts together, 
what I've done is I've gone to the very top of the skirts and I've put a pin in the seam allowance so I can find, you're going to want to find the middle of your skirt. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get 64 inches of 2.5 inch straps. You're going to need two of those. And what I did was I found the middle of the strap and I put a pin there and what I'm going to do is right sides together. I'm going to put that pin with that pin and then I'm going to get the other one. Okay, And then I'm going to put it on the back side. So I'm just making a sandwich. So right side to right side and then right side to the back side of the skirt. Now I'm going to start using some clips so we're not poking holes in everything. And then clip it all the way around that edge. Hopefully in the viewfinder you can see what I'm doing. Alright, now what you're going to do, oh, I would go ahead and just stitch this part together so that it's just done and you don't have to worry about fussing with it. Okay, so I have got all of this say stitch to the belt. This is the belt. Um, and what you're going to do, basically, is I'm going to stitch from the top of this. All, I, I had to piece mine together because I didn't quite have enough, but you're going to keep going all the way down. I am probably going to come across here at an angle just so that the um, belt in the back will have that angle and then I'm going to come back down all the way down this other side. Keep coming till I get back to my apron and then I'm going to stop. Then, I hope this is making sense, then I'm going to come back to this side and do the same thing. Start it where I st um, started with my apron, uh, the bottom part. So all the way down around the ends, all the way down, all the way down, and then make a little angle seam, and then come back down this side, back, 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 all the way back down until I get back to my apron. The reason for this is we're creating a little pocket. We're going to turn all of this inside out so that the right side is out. And then when we turn it inside out, we're going to iron this part right here in on itself. And then just insert the top part. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the corners. I'll show you what I've done when I'm done. And then um, I'm going to iron it and then I'll show you what I did for the rest. Alright, so I'm not sure if you can see what I've done, but I've sewed all the way down. I did my little angle. Let me cut it so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, and then when you turn it inside out, you're going to snip that little corner off. It'll help um, keep you from having a bunch of bulk there. So anyway, I've sewed all the way down, went down till I got back to where the skirt part is. And I wanted to show you I turned it inside out. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to iron everything down um, after I, excuse me, after I turn that inside out, I'm going to do this one too and I'm just going to iron everything out and then I'll show you what I mean when I, when I do this, both the right sides that haven't been sewn will meet each other. So let me go do that. Okay, so I ironed in the seam allowance and a little bit extra just to make sure that it's going to catch. And then I grabbed the um, front top piece, the apron, top of the apron. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this 
and set it right inside there. And then, yes, you are going to have to pin. And I am so sorry, but it is what it is. You're going to have to pin just right down here on the bottom. I don't think that's going to hurt anything. But when you can't pin, don't pin. And when you have to, you just have to. So anyway, I'm going to pin all of this down. And now what I normally do is just keep sewing and do a top stitch all the way around the belt. So I'm going to do that, and then you're going to be done. All right. Well, what do you think? You've made an apron, and it's waterproof. And you can just wash those dishes and not have to worry about it. And you look cute doing it, which is always important when you're doing dishes and stuff. Um, hopefully you guys liked that video. Um, if you want to, you can give us a thumbs up. Or if you want to subscribe and hang around for all of the other Christmas ideas that I'm going to be giving you guys, this would really be a great gift to give somebody. And it's fairly inexpensive to make. So um, you can whip up a couple of these and give them to your friends or mamas that you know that get soaked when they cook or when they uh, wash dishes. If you want to hit that subscribe button, YouTube will let you know when I'm next uploaded. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below, and I will get to those as soon as I can. I would love to see your aprons when you're done, or let me know if you guys have any suggestions on, on things for me to do next. Um, Christmas is coming, so I'm thinking of all of these really cool ideas. Thanks again for joining us at Faith Works Design. All right, so what you're going to need is a child to interrupt. No, sir, go play. So if she washes, washes, I'm going to be lining it with this in case she washes. Okay. And having it on the board like this actually makes it a little easier. If your pen or marking tool will work. Okay, we're going to have to start that over again. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our pool and pull on one side. There's like, well, there that went. <laughs> um, it hit me when I got done and I turned it inside out. I was like, oh, poo. So <laughs> um, if you can want to hit that subscribe button, uh, Facebook will let you.